Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You you may remember, as I do, an experiment that you uh, did in elementary school. At least I believe that most everybody did this experiment in elementary school where you wrap a uh, bean in a paper towel and you put that paper towel into a Ziploc bag and you make the water, make uh, the paper towel wet with water and make it damp, not too wet, but wet enough that it can uh, create a nice environment in there. And all you had to do was make sure that the paper towel stayed uh, damp over the course of days or, or weeks. I can't remember how long it took at this point. Uh, but you're, after a while, your bean would start to sprout and it would start to grow something uh, from it. We were all little uh, beanstalk growers like our little fairy tale uh, friend Jack. And it was like a magic trick. It was like it was magic beans, but it wasn't magic beans. Uh, all you needed was water. And look what happened. It was great. Now, I don't know uh, a whole lot more today than I did back then about what was actually happening in that Ziploc bag or what things needed to happen to make those, that bean uh, grow. But I do know, and I think you probably do too, that... Uh, uh, we made, even though we made our uh, paper towel, made sure our paper towel was properly watered, there were other things at play. Like if we did everything the same, we put that ziploc, ba- put that paper towel in the ziploc bag, and then we put it outside in weather like that is outside today, the bean would not grow. Or if we would have done the same thing and then put that ziploc bag in our desk and closed it to the darkness, or or put it in a, a corner somewhere away from the light that bean would not have grown. Even being in a Ziploc bag eventually stunts the growth of that little bean sprout because eventually it's going to need to be planted into the ground so that it can receive the nutrients from the soil and actually grow into something bigger than a bag sprout. So while the water on the damp towel is, in fact, what seems to make the bean sprout grow... You can't separate it from these other things that are at play and still get the same result. Without the rest of the things that that plant needs to grow, sunlight, nutrient-rich soil, the right temperature, it wouldn't create new life out of that simple bean. Martin Luther says, water by itself is only water. Plain old ordinary water. He asks, who does not know that water is water if it is considered separately? But, he says, baptism is not simply plain water, but instead God's water. Not that the water itself, like we showed in the children's sermon, not that the water itself is any nobler than any other water, but that God's word and commandment are added to this water. We don't use magic water to make a bean sprout, and we don't use magic water to make baptism work. We use just plain water. Because we know that it's not the water that does anything on its own. It is water that is combined with something that ultimately is able to bring new life. As we continue to focus on these weeks in Lent, the ways that God takes ordinary things and makes them holy, this is really what it's all about. It's about understanding that all of this, all of this in in this place, The furniture, the decorations, this space, you all, it's just ordinary, everyday stuff. It's wood, it's fabric, it's wires and technology, flesh and blood, plain old water. But when those things are combined with God, made one with God in Christ Jesus, 
made one with the God-given gifts that each of us have. The earthly is made into something heavenly. The ordinary is made into something holy. This is exactly what the Apostle Paul is talking about in his letter to the Romans when he says, For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. In baptism, our old self is put to death and buried along with Jesus because of his death on our behalf. So that when Jesus rises from the dead, we too rise with him into new life. In his sacrificial love for us, us, Christ has put to death our old, plain, sinful lives and raised them up into something holy and divine. Eternal life with God. We are joined together with Christ and we cannot be separated any longer. Like water by itself is only water, we too ourselves are only human. Bound to sin and death as we attempt on a daily basis to make ourselves holy. But in Christ's death and resurrection made a complete part of us in baptism, we are joined together with the Word of God. The Word made flesh. And God accomplishes within us the holiness that we cannot ourselves attain. A holiness that God has always intended for us, despite our missteps throughout history and in our own lives. And in baptism, we are given a gift that we cannot be separated from. We are joined together with Christ. The waters of baptism are not plain water. They become spiritually life-giving waters because of what God has done. But water never really is plain, is it? Water is quite literally for us and for the world life. For our physical bodies, for the physical nature of this world, water is life. It is directly associated with health and well-being. And so it would be irresponsible of us to talk about plain water. As if, it, as if there weren't places in this world, all over the world, where plain water means something a little bit different for us than it does for them. Where water doesn't just come out of a faucet. It's in a well three miles away. Where once you get to that well, you may or may not find clean water. But you have no choice but to fill up your jugs because it's your only source of water. Where clean water is needed for drinking and cooking and bathing and farming, much like it is for us, but clean water isn't accessible. It's not available. For millions and millions of people in our world, this is the reality every day. And I think it is one of the greatest injustices in our world. The Apostle Paul says we are made instruments of righteousness. In being freed from sin and death... Reborn children of God, given new life each morning that we wake to breathe new life. We live in grace. We live in new life. If you hear us talking ever about a baptismal calling, this is it. That because of God's gift of forgiveness and new life by joining us together as one with Christ, we then live in response to that gift. 
demonstrating our salvation in what we do in this world. Because of the new life we've received in the waters of baptism, we do what we can to make sure that water gives life to all God's creation. We make sure that all that we do in this world gives, gives life and doesn't take it. Our baptismal calling is to make sure that injustices like access to cl- uh, lack of access to clean water don't happen anymore. Our baptismal calling is to work toward a reality in which clean water can give life to all of God's people. I want to show you a quick video from a few years ago about how the ELCA, which is all of you, has engaged in this baptismal calling. Gifts to ELCA World Hunger's Walk for Water are helping to create healthier families and stronger economies. Through projects that provide clean drinking water with spring boxes and boreholes, support for irrigation systems, education around sanitation in rural villages, and so much more. Through your gifts, together, we're helping women have access to clean water near their villages. A woman in sub-Saharan Africa can now save 660 hours a year, time she can now spend with her family. She can go to work and spend less money on medical expenses. Her children are healthier and can go to school to obtain an education to secure better opportunities for their future. Together, through sanitation and hygiene programs supported by your gifts, we're helping prevent waterborne illnesses and life-threatening diseases that affect tens of thousands of people each year. Thank you for responding to God's call to love and serve our neighbors. Your gifts make it possible for ELCA World Hunger to support water-related projects in 36 countries. While this part of the journey is ending, the work to end hunger remains. Continue to walk with us as we work to reach more lives in more places. Together, we can break the cycle of hunger and poverty. Thank you. So yes, that was from a few years ago. But as the video says at the end, that the work to end hunger, the work to end the lack of access to clean water is never over. We hope that there is a day in the future where it is over where we have engaged faithfully in this work and have come to a point where all God's people have access to the things that we are blessed to have access to. And you are a part of this work already, whether you know it or not. And if you didn't know it or don't know it, I'll encourage you today to be more actively involved or embrace or uh, more actively embrace this baptismal calling that you've been given but you already are a part of it by your presence here in this place through your prayers through your uh, giving spirits in this church and in the larger church through all that you do you are part of this baptismal calling that god has given to us as we join together to work for justice and for life in this world. It is true, water by itself is just water. But water combined with God's word and our trust in that word becomes forgiveness and new life for us. And it joins us together as one in Christ. And it is true that we by ourselves are just human. But with the Spirit of God working through us and within us, we are a community working together for justice and life for all of God's creation. In holy baptism, this ordinary water and these ordinary people become holy vessels of God's abundant life in this world. We become instruments of righteousness We become beloved children of God. And the greatest gift that we receive is that we cannot be separated from this forgiveness and new life that we are given in Christ Jesus. 
Let us pray. Holy God, we are grateful for the water that you give us to sustain our lives here on earth. For the, clean, for the access to clean water that we have to give life to our physical bodies, we give you thanks, O oh God. And we ask that you help us to work in our lives and through the ministry of our churches to bring clean water to all who are in need of it. And we thank you for that baptismal calling that you've given to each of us through the gift of baptism that puts to death our old self and raises to to new life a life that is one with you. We give you thanks for the ways that you continue to sustain our lives physically and spiritually. And we ask that you continue to remind us of your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray.